So we are at the top of the hour, and I am so pleased to introduce Zena Olson. Uh, Zena has a unique story in cybersecurity, and it is through a lot of her speaking engagements that she has been able to share it with the world. Uh, she is also somebody who did not start her career in cybersecurity. She is somebody who has been a professional who changed into cybersecurity and again, through speaking, has been able to share her story, share her expertise, and really spread all of the knowledge that she has to offer. I was lucky enough to speak with Zena on the stage at Diana Initiative last year. It feels like a million years ago. And it was an honor to speak with her then and equally an honor to introduce her now. So I would like to welcome to the stage Zena Olson. Zena, take it away. Thank you so much, Ladrina. I really did enjoy our talk together. Um, I learned a ton and it's a perfect illustration of the talk I'm gonna share with everyone today. So uh, really quick, I'm Zena, also known as Cheerio on Twitter. I am a Blue Team Village senior lead. I am a doctoral student in cybersecurity at Marymount University. I'm a cyber threat intelligence analyst. I'm a SANS Women's Academy graduate. I have an MBA in IT management and I have seven GX certs. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of SANS, <laughs> if you can't tell. Um, but before we get started, I have a really quick uh, note from the lawyers. So I am not speaking on behalf of my employers. The opinions I express are mine and mine alone, and I am here in my own individual capacity. Okay, so now that that's done, I actually want to tell you a really quick story. So I was maybe like six years old. Uh, I was really young, and I decided to get involved in the talent show for my school. And I was gonna choreograph the best dance ever. And it was right around the time that Rick, Rick Astley's song, Never Gonna Give You Up came out and it was everywhere. And so I'm like, I am doing that song. So I practice and practice and I had all the perfect moves, you know, here I am a little six year old, like, you know, never gonna give you up, right? And I just was like totally into it. So come, come like the show day, right? Uh, this, was, this was a really long time ago. I'm dating myself, but we still had vinyl records. So I had, I had a Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up song on a vinyl record. One side was lyrics and the other side was just inter instrumental, right? So my whole talk was built around the lyrics or my whole uh, dance actually. And so I was up on stage, I was doing the intro and all of that and waiting for the initial like words and they never came. And I was just standing up on stage, like waiting for the song to start and it never did. It was just the instrumental the whole time. So in that moment, I had a very important decision to make as a six year old. And that was, do I keep going or do I stop, right? And in that moment, I just decided to make the best of it, keep on going, uh, you know, like, who cares? I don't have the words and the lyrics to it. I'll just do it from memory and put on the best show I possibly can and just be satisfied that I did my best. Um, so what does me being a six-year-old choreographing a dance for the talent show, uh, you know, that, that went horribly wrong, uh, have to do with public speaking? And I am going to share with you that it has a lot. So uh, in this talk, uh, I'll talk about uh, skills you can build through public speaking, some benefits to public speaking, some downsides and some kind of like heads up and maybe a few pro tips of like what to watch out for, uh, including some threat modeling and finally some tips and resources. So in the Slack channel, I went in and put in all the links. So um, please join the Slack. They're all in there as far as the resources that I'm gonna be sharing. So that way you don't have to be uh, like concerned or worried or anything like that. 
So here's a very brief list of skills that you gain through public speaking, and I'm going to rattle them off just really quick. So project planning, coordination, completion of projects, it gives you perspective, collaboration, ingenuity, perseverance, patience, professionalism, dealing with bullies. Yes, dealing with bullies is on my list of stuff. Uh, confidence, time management. If you don't like that phrase, there's task management as well. Uh, organization, budgeting, uh, leadership, introspection, research focus, and more. So uh, with public speaking, a pro tip for you is that uh, what I do is I focus on building my skills and the skills that I want long, long term, as well as connections. Um, I know that some people talk about doing public speaking uh, because they think they're going to get promoted or they've seen other people promoted or a new job or something like that. And I say, don't focus on that. Just focus on your skills and meeting people. And so now I'm going to give you about 24 reasons uh, why you want to do public speaking if you aren't, or reasons to continue doing public speaking or further explore. So reason one, I'm just going to come out here and say it, bro culture. So at some places, and I'm not going to name names, uh, like they're not very keen on women giving technical talks. I know it's the 2020 and there are still people that aren't uh, into it. So um, what I've done is anytime, you know, on my resume, I put that I do technical talks. So that way uh, the hiring manager, if they know that that's a, not a fit with their company culture or, you know, a project that I'm working on or, or whatever it is, right? Um, that they will know to automatically reject me. And why is that a good thing? Because you don't want to be working at a place that doesn't necessarily support uh, women or minorities giving technical presentations, right? Because that uh, kind of cuts off uh, your ability to advocate for yourself, in my opinion. So reason two, it helps you bypass the HR firewall. So, um, uh, Mitch, Mitch Parker, he's a CISO, and he was kind enough to review this. He gave me a great story of how, especially if you want to be an executive down the road, you're going to have to meet a lot of people. And uh, through knowing these people, you get to bypass the HR firewall. So, you know, through the various speaking events that I've done, I've got to meet people all over the world. And, uh, you know, Positioning yourself to know people in different organizations, you know, Fortune 500s to small businesses all over, it really puts you in a good position to bypass whatever it is and get a, get a clue of what's going on with their company culture. Uh, reason three. So uh, this is a really good one, and it's actually helped me a ton. So public speaking gives me the opportunity to practice and also actual experience um, that I use at my job, right? So um, there's this like crazy idea I have of this new way to do the CTI thing or whatever. Um, you know, as a busy person, like I need an actual excuse to do things sometimes. And so public speaking is my excuse to dabble and research and to refine my craft and all of that to be able to um, make uh, benefit my job essentially and you can do that too and it gives you practice so let's say you know you're you're not so much on the technical side um, presenting gives you great skills at the workplace too and being able to communicate ideas so reason four and Ladrina touched on this uh, that it's actually a really great team building and mentorship opportunity. So for instance, let's say you're a team member and you decide to submit a talk to a conference. It's a really great team building exercise. Let's say that you do a co-speaking event with someone like super awesome like Ladrina. I mean, I learned a ton um, just doing one talk with her. Do you know what I mean? Like um, the, 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 the opportunities and the value of doing uh, things with co-speakers is just immense and I highly recommend it. Uh, reason five, 
So you get to give back through sharing ideas and your research. So as a security, as, as defenders, as security people, um, we get better by helping out each other. So public speaking is a way to do that. Reason six, uh, you get to focus your research on stuff that you like and you get to build your skills based upon what it is that you wanna do. Reason seven, I also use public speaking as a life hack to actually complete projects. So I know, um, yeah, I know some people, uh, you know, ha might have a hard time completing stuff, but if you have a talk and you have to give it and you have to be semi-coherent and talk at least moderately intelligently about a subject, like you're gonna, you're, the fear of failure is gonna drive you to get the project done. Reason eight. So uh, public speaking means no excuses. Like you can't show up late to your talk and just be like, yeah, like, you know, I felt like getting a coffee. Like you can't do that. You, you show up or you show up <laughs> basically. Uh, reason nine, it opens doors and creates opportunities. So um, I'll give you two really quick examples. So the Sans Purple Team Summit, I met, uh, I met people on Twitter, got them on the Sans Purple Team Summit Advisory Board. Uh, about a couple months later, I reached out to one of them because I found his research project and I was like, man, this is so good. And uh, we got talking and he had abandoned a Black Hat Go project. And I was like, what? I'm like, that is freaking awesome. And so uh, he started working on it again. And through the course of talking and all of that, we ended up deciding to uh, submit a talk to the DEF CON Red Team Village. It got accepted. And now there's this really awesome tool out there that people can use in their organization for Purple Team exercises. All because, uh, you know, it's, it's about sharing and encouraging and helping each other out. So really, it was just, uh, you know, the result of a conversation. So awesome stuff can happen. The other thing is Jorge Archiles, uh, he was also on the SANS Purple Team Summit Advisory Board. He reached out to me later and asked me to contribute to the Purple Team Exercise Framework. And uh, that's for Purple Team people that want to get into Purple Team or mature their Purple Team. And then I'm also on the SIVE Purple Team Summit uh, Advisory Board, CFP Board. So, I mean, the opportunities and the doors it opens are endless. I can't, I can't even like list them all in days, probably. Reason 10, you can refine your methodology and understanding. So when I'm preparing a talk, um, oh gosh, especially the ones that I did this year for Blue Team Village and Red Team Village, like I spent hours like um, going through the talk to making, making sure I understood it, looking up a ton of stuff, like refining the methodology that I was using to be able to present the information. It was super helpful with uh, deepening my understanding. Reason 11, so public speaking, in my opinion, is kind of like a form of teaching. And so um, Richard Feynman, I don't know if I'm saying it right, sorry. Uh, he had a really great tweet. Uh, there was a really great tweet where basically you can learn faster through teaching a topic and then simplifying it. So basically, that's what I do with all of my talks, all of them, all, even this one. Uh, reason 12, representation matters. I'm Hispanic and a woman, first generation, Mexican American. Uh, reason 13, you get better at writing. Writing is so important in corporate America. If you have to write a really good, a, a really good CFP submission, like you're gonna, you're gonna get really, really, really good at writing uh, doing that. Reason 14, leadership opportunities. So I, you know, as a former business owner, like I thrive on leadership opportunities. Like, like I, I, my identity is so closely tied with, uh, with doing leadership type stuff that when I'm not, like, I don't, I honestly don't know who I am. So public speaking is a way for me to channel that and to get my needs met as a professional and as a person. Um, Another one, reason 15, is you get to challenge yourself. So I normally do talks that uh, 
make me go outside of my comfort zone where I may not completely understand it, but I'm going to research and do everything I can to understand it to the best of my ability before the talk. Reason 16, training opportunities. So uh, with public speaking, you get access to events, uh, you know, whether it's the conferences or training or whatever it is. And it's a really nice way to offset uh, whatever training program you have at your org. Um, I have, uh, I've gotten so many ideas. I mean, honestly, just being around the people and hearing them talk and, uh, you know, watching the presentations or even the side chatter has helped me immensely. Reason 17 is mentorship. So at all of the things that I've done, I've got to meet CEOs, I've gotten to meet uh, CISOs, directors of companies, managers, like all of these senior leaders uh, at organizations around the world, actually. And sometimes uh, the, the thing that I love about it, even if the interactions are short, right? Um, some of the wisdom and just grace and kindness that these people uh, share in, in the limited time is just priceless to me. It gives me hope to keep going. Uh, reason 18, promote yourself. So um, this, this applies to not only promoting yourself and being your own advocate on, you know, social media and all the other avenues and creating a really nice repertoire or resume or whatever it is, right? But it's also, um, you know, at some places, they don't really promote as often as you would like or as, as you think they should or whatever. So I just promote myself and I'm like, you know, I want to take on this leadership opportunity or I want to do this or that. So I do it um, and I'm not limited by my title, which is awesome. Uh, reason 19, pay. So as you do public speaking and you get further into it, like you can get honorariums and possibly even get paid to speak at, at other events. Um, so that's a way to offset any salary discrepancies if there's like a pay gap going on and stuff like that, or just to pay off extra bills, right? Like we all, <laughs> we all have bills. Uh, reason 20, perspective. So Doing public speaking gives me a really good idea of who I am and what I'm capable of. And it helps me also uh, push the limits of what I want to do as a professional and as a responsible person. So, um, you know, in the event you have other people that might project their negativity on you, it's easier to just be like, Neh. like that's totally you and not me. So I use it as perspective and perspective on um, like when I have a huge project and I'm like, oh my God, how can I do this? And then I'll think back of all the other stuff I've done and I'm like, ah, like I got this. So it's really helpful. Reason 21 is a coping strategy. So uh, things can be a little stressful right now. I don't need to mention all the stuff going on. So public speaking to me helps me focus my time and an energy and attention on one project that I know will be positive for me, like constructive. Um, so I use it as a coping strategy, to be honest. Uh, reason 22, you get your power back. So, you know, some, some, some places aren't necessarily supportive of women in cybersecurity. So when that happens or, you know, people in the community are rude or whatever, whatever negative thing, uh, you get your power back because you design the CFP. You have the ideas. It goes through a review board. They look it over, they approve it or don't approve it or whatever, right? But you're taking constructive action to help yourself. It's also uh, reason 23, it's a creative outlet. I love being creative, if you can't tell. Uh, so this is my outlet for it. And reason 24, uh, mental health and self-esteem. Um, for me, uh, seeing the projects that I get done and seeing that added to my resume or cover letter or whatever it is and knowing that I'm also contributing to the community and doing things to help myself uh, just, honestly helps my self-esteem and makes me 
not feel like not feel bad. Uh, so to sum this part up, basically there are a ton of transferable skills uh, that you can gain and refine from public speaking that you can actually use in the workplace. Uh, for instance, planning the talk, writing skills, logistics, budgeting, resource allocation, marketing, uh, networking, presentation skills, sharing content and ideas, and more. So I'm going to address some concerns I've heard about why people don't get involved in public speaking. Uh, the first thing is sometimes people are going to be hateful and negative regardless of what you do or don't do. So you just have to decide what you want and do it anyways. And the con experience, I've heard some people are concerned about harassment at cons. So I, re I recommend reading the Code of Conduct. And then also too, uh, getting a group of people that are like-minded and just hang out with them. Um, and so that's, that's what I do uh, for the most part and then only branch out when, when I feel it's, uh, it's, it's gonna be welcomed or received well. Uh, so I do that. And then it's also, uh, people are concerned about future employers not being happy about their public speaking. Um, I say it's an opportunity to have conversations with the hiring manager. And then uh, also too, Mitch Parker recommends to include public speaking in your professional development plan. And just a little warning, uh, companies can use public speaking against you. So you just want to be careful about that and make sure it's in your development plan. And uh, so now we're gonna talk about threat modeling, public speaking. Um, so think about what you get from public speaking and what you would have to do if you decide not to do public speaking, how you're gonna get your needs met. For instance, having leadership opportunities is like vital, vitally important to me. So if I'm not doing public speaking, how else will I fill those needs, right? And how will I build my network? How will I gain access to some of these people to uh, build connections and build my network and get the mentoring. Uh, a pro tip about this is uh, do your best to say yes to opportunities. Um, I look at public speaking as an adventure. Every single talk I've done is an adventure. Uh, people are concerned about cost too. And so I say start local. You know, um, there are local cons, meetups. You can go to the library and arrange your own thing. That's awesome. That'll teach you some entrepreneurial uh, skills. And let's see what else. Oh, cancel culture. Uh, people are worried about uh, being canceled on Twitter and God knows what else. So the way that I deal with it, uh, there are some people that I know that aren't necessarily um, the nicest. So I keep my distance, to be honest. And I, um, I just, I stay away from events that I know that they're hosting, so. Uh, and another thing to address is to share or not share at your company. And this is an important thing. So um, whenever I go to conferences, I look at how the employees of the speaker are treating them. So I remember one time there was a conference I was at and I knew that 10 or 15 of this lady's uh, uh, co-workers were there and not one showed up to her talk. So uh, for me, that's a very good uh, window into that particular company's culture uh, from my perspective. So, um, you know, if you know you work at a place that's like that, I do not recommend sharing uh, with your coworkers your public speaking. It will not end well for you. Uh, if you're at an inclusive place, so Katie Nichols, I love her, and the folks at MITRE, uh, when she was there, they were just so supportive of her. Like, those are goals. So finding, finding the good examples out there. So how do you protect yourself from unsupportive people in the industry? And the thing that I will just boil it down for you is that you need to do your best to be as neutral as possible not take things personally and keep your emotions out of it. Uh, you, you don't wanna let them hijack your amygdala at all costs. And 
so why publicly speak when there are all these downsides, right? Um, and here's two reasons. Representation matters. And uh, I've also gained so many skills presenting that when I'm given projects, I don't stress about being able to deliver, if that makes sense. So when opportunities for leadership or other things come my way, I know I can do it. So JLo um, in the Slack channel has a really great thing where she says basically that sometimes uh, people will plant a seed uh, for you to see yourself in a better way. So public speaking gives you the opportunity to do that for other people and you'll be surprised on your public speaking journey. You'll meet so many people that just this serendipitous moments that happen is just priceless. So develop a speaking persona. Um, I put together things that I really like. So I love British humor, Disney princesses, all things Elle Woods. And I love the presentation of Coldplay concerts. So I just develop a persona about that. And it helps too uh, when people are mean or haters are gonna hate, that it helps me distance, um, you know, when people are cruel uh, that uh, they're not really, it helps me take it less personally, basically. So how do you find opportunities? Uh, SANS is a great outlet for that at their summits. I posted a link to a pulse dive opportunity for people that want to do speaking. You can also just do hashtag CFP and search on Twitter and you'll find a ton of stuff. I have a bunch of, I have, I have uh, rotating opportunities of CFPs, so contact me. Um, there's a lot of people in the community that are going to be supportive. So reach out to those people. And uh, so uh, how do I deal with my nerves? Uh, for instance, today I listened to Run DMC. It's tricky right before I came to this talk. And so like it hypes me up and I get excited and enthusiastic about the talk and it helps me focus on being excited instead of being scared. So find a song that does that for you. And additional resources, I posted a ton of them in the Slack. Um, and a, a great one is about storytelling. Um, Katie Nichols did a great write up on suggesting how to do your CFP. And uh, the storytelling one really quick, uh, if you want to incite oxytocin and the audience, you uh, share a story about empathy uh, to incite empathy in your audience. If you want endorphins, you do humor. So for instance, at the beginning of this uh, thing, I, I talked about a story to help build a connection with you guys so that you know a little bit more about me. So here's some action items from this talk. Uh, observe how the coworkers of women speakers and minority speakers are at the con so that you can get a window into the company culture. Um, think about what you want to get out of public speaking and do a cost benefit analysis based upon uh, what you need, what you don't need, how you can supplement those needs if you don't do public speaking um, and stuff like that, right? Um, the other thing is, Plant a seed for other people to see themselves in a better light. Uh, I can't tell you how valuable that is, uh, at least to me. And I do my best to sprinkle positivity and, and encouragement wherever I can, because you never know if it might lead to a DEF CON Red Team Village talk, right? And then most of all, have fun with your talks. So. Public speaking is a lot like the story I shared with you at the beginning of this talk, where six-year-old Zena was dancing to Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up. Um, unexpected things come up, you're gonna be scared, uh, but the point is to feel the fear and do it anyway. Improvise, know your content, and do the best you possibly can in the moment, no matter what. And thank you so much for your time and I will jump into the slot.